So we are setting off on day final. Day final. <laughs> and uh, it's supposed to be, what, a three, four hour? Yeah, four hours to the town. It's a big descent. I mean, we're at about 4,050 meters now. Oh, is it? Okay. And I think we go to 3,300, so. Oh, 38. At the town? Yeah, it's not that low. So it's not that low. <laughs> it's not a big descent. It's quite flat, actually, along the river or the valley. Okay, so as per most of the time, discard everything I just said. <laughs> One of the things that I've I learned from doing this whole hike is that feeling of meditation when you're hiking. Uh, our marketing therapist consultant, Amber, who we speak to every week about marketing and everything that we're doing for Roughly, was really uh, pushing us to work on, on doing some meditation to try and sort of calm our minds, to allow new ideas to come in. And I found that's exactly what this hike did for me. I needed to focus on my breathing because it's just such a strenuous hike. Um, and I guess I was not in the best shape for it. So I had to focus on my breathing. Each step that I was taking had to be looking down at my feet right in front of me to make sure that I was like not tripping over things and uh, really just focusing on that. So I'd have thoughts come in like, oh, there's a group behind me, they're gonna catch up, I gotta go faster, or I have to catch up to Greg, he's way up there. There are all these sort of anxieties that I could, I could hear going through my mind as I was walking. But in the end, I, I had to really silence those because if I focused on them, if that anxiety sort of caught up with me, it would make me one, lose my rhythm, two, lose my breath, and then at three, I'd have to stop. And then when you stop, you take a few minutes or a minute or so, and then you continue on again, but then you've just sort of lost all of your momentum. So for me, I think the one thing that I really learned about this is really just focusing on what you're doing, getting in the groove, staying in that moment without really focusing on what's going on ahead of you or what's behind you. Just being being yourself in the moment. And that's something that I really struggled with before. And I think this is sort of helping me get into that that feeling so that I'm not so focused on on the negatives that could be up ahead or that I've left behind. More about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and what's important to me. During yesterday's solo trek with Whimsy, I actually blew out a tendon in the back of my uh, knee pretty bad. And I wasn't going to say anything about it because no one wants to hear you complain about this hurts and that hurts. Uh, much less kind of after the fact when, okay, you're here and you can just rest. But the thought was also that uh, today was just going to be a total kind of cakewalk right into town. And it's not proving to be that way. There are plenty of stretches that are just scaling along the side of the mountain here, pretty flat, pretty smooth. But there are also a series of pretty severe ascents and descents. And that is when this tendon is absolutely just burning up on fire and, and I'm really struggling. So we've done seven, almost eight kilometers uh, to this point from our campsite. And we've got another seven kilometers of who knows what ahead of us. So I'm hopeful that this is going to be kind of a smooth uh, trek in. But it's already showing us some fangs and claws that are getting not just a little bit uh, painful, but a bit uh, precarious because I don't have the footing that I really need for this. So my knee tendon has flared up quite considerably. It is, uh, it's painful for sure, but mostly I'm just trying to keep it immobilized. And if I don't use it, it doesn't hurt, but it's, it's definitely gotten weak. It's definitely gotten painful. Uh, and so this morning's 15 kilometers was just more than it needed to bear. So we'll see if that's going to be a future problem or just a kind of here and now problem. In the meantime, uh, we've got a little over two and a half kilometers to go. And our vehicle is meeting us at noon. It's about 10 to noon. So about 15 minutes or so ago, I sent Jess on ahead with Whimsy so that they could connect with the vehicle. I mean, the last thing we want is to lose our ride. So, um, so she's hustling on ahead, or I guess it just, you know, she's going at a normal pace. We've only got two and a half kilometers, a little less. 
and and so no big deal for her to to work these switchbacks but for me in this condition mostly i just want to not be hurried or not feel that hurry so she can get down there she can you know take the stuff off the the muleteer get it into the vehicle and and sort of get situated and more or less by then i should be cruising in or hobbling in as the case may be I just sent our muleteer Irlandes to go and rescue Greg. Um, I told him that he had hurt his knee is about two kilometers out up on the steep part. So I asked him to go with his horse uh, to go and pick him up. So I know that Greg doesn't love it when I do these things, but I sent the rescue horse for him. It's he probably is only a kilometer or maybe a kilometer and a half away. I bet you he was still going quite fast trying to make it down but I just didn't want him to hurt himself anymore. So I sent our guy to go and pick him up. And we'll see. I, I just hope that he doesn't like uh, tell the guy like, no, I don't even want to get on your horse. I just want to walk. So just sent the muleteer up with the horse to bring me down. She must not know me that well because they would have to drag my dead rotting bones off this mountain to get me to go on the horse and not finish this by foot. I recorded myself saying he's going to be too stubborn to go on the horse. You must not know me too well. I am going to fight my way down this mountain. Whatever damage is done is done. Now it's just me against the mountain. I even said it on my video. I said he's not going to take it. I even told Irel in this. He doesn't know you're coming, but tell him to go on the horse. Nope, not a oh, chance. Where did he find you? Yeah, he may, he would have saved me 10 minutes, 15 Only. minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Made it down, survived. No horses involved. Even no, though I tried. No spot emergency button involved. Just my own willpower and stubbornness got me through it. And I'll probably be paying for it for quite some time. But you know what? Worth it. <laughs>